So glad y'all are joining me here on Apron Strings. If this is your first time, welcome, and I hope you come back real often. I do a lot of southern cooking and some canning and some gardening and various things, mostly cooking. But anyhow, I'm glad you're here, and I hope you subscribe and continue to watch and share the channel with your friends. Today I'm going to make something that's really easy and simple, but it's a great addition to your meal, no matter what you're having. Potatoes seem like they go with anything. When I was growing up, Mama would make the best stewed potatoes, and they taste like they had milk gravy on them, but it was the way she fixed them and how she thickened them at the end. So I'm going to make some old-fashioned stewed potatoes with a cream sauce. So y'all come on over here and watch what I'm doing. I'm just going to peel them right now, get them in the pot, and get them tender, but not, not to where they mush, because you want them to hold their shape while you put the sauce in there. So we'll get these made, and y'all have a new little side dish if you don't already make them. I use my little face. handy uh, trio peeler, the one that I always use. I'm going to peel my potatoes right quick. And I'm not going to make y'all watch me do all of these. I'll just uh, turn the camera off and bring you back when I'm just about ready to cut them all up. Okay, I decided I'm just going to do two potatoes because it's just me and Troy. And I don't like leftovers that last for several days. But I want to show y'all. I just cut my potatoes in half and then I lay them flat side down so they won't hop all around and make me cut myself. Then I usually third them if they're pretty good size. And then I just cut me some about one inch pieces. That's really hard, isn't it? Aren't y'all glad I told you how to do this? You might have never learned. Get these in the pot, and I probably have 10 or 12 minutes. I'm going to check them because I just want to be able to stick my fork in them, but I don't want them to smush because I want to put the uh, thickening in there and add the milk and butter and stuff that you add to make it taste yummy and I want to have hunks of potato to put on a fork if I decide I want a bite and you know I'm pretty sure that I'm going to want a bite tonight we're going to have fried pork chops and some green beans and some of these stewed potatoes so we're going to have us a good old meal so I'm going to get them into my pot here and I'm going to barely cover them with water and get them on to boil. And I'll bring y'all back in just a snitch when I'm ready to start thickening them and flavoring them. I brought them. the potatoes up to a boil and then I cut it down to medium low where they'll just kind of simmer along until they're tender. And then we're going to add um, onion and garlic powder, salt and black pepper. I know y'all knew that was coming. And then we'll add some canned milk and uh, some cornstarch dissolved in some milk to thicken it and it is it's a butter of course we gotta have butter this is a delicious side dish when you get through with it as a side dish you could mash it up some add you some bacon bits and a little cheddar cheese and you'd have a delicious potato soup just saying okay when i put my knife in them if you can see what i'm doing it cuts but it's not just turning to mush that's how you want them so i'm gonna go ahead and add my onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and some black pepper. And I do have the measurements on a card that I'll put at the end. I think. Let me get a little spoon and taste. And see what we got here for flavor. That's pretty well spot on, so the card will be exactly right. Now, I put three tablespoons of cornstarch in here, and I added uh, part of that can of canned milk to dissolve it in. Now I'm fixing to put the rest of one 12-ounce can of canned milk, evaporated milk, in here and let it heat, and then I'm going to add my cornstarch mixture. Okay, remember I had two cups of water, and then I'm going to add, when after the potatoes are cooked, you're going to add your uh, evaporated milk, but I always use, save enough of it that I can put in my cornstarch to dissolve it. So let's let that come back up to a simmer, then I'll add the cornstarch and let it simmer until the cornstarch 
doesn't taste cornstarchy, but I'm fixing to get some butter to put in it first. Okay, I added about a half a stick of butter, and I'm going to let that melt in there. Now you see why it tasted like cream gravy? It's got the same ingredients, but it's got the addition of the potatoes and the starch from the potatoes and all the flavoring. Absolutely scrumptious. My mama would make fried chicken and she would fix these sometimes instead of making mashed potatoes and gravy. So I happened to think about it this evening and Troy's running his dump truck today having fun. So I thought I would cook some pork chops and green beans and stewed potatoes for supper and I might add some corn on the cob. I'm not sure. But it's starting to simmer a little bit and I can see my butter's melting. Now, you could cut back on the butter, and you could use whole milk or skim milk instead of the evaporated milk. Would you get the same fat and good delicious flavor? Absolutely not. But would it work? It would work perfectly. So it's up to you where you want to spend your day's calories and how good you want it to taste. But if I was going to try to impress somebody, I'd use the evaporated milk and the butter. They say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So if you're trying to impress somebody, you might want to make this and add it to one of your meals because it's a pretty surefire method that they're going to love it. While it's a simmering, I think it needs, I think it needs some more black pepper in it. My preacher says if you can't, let's see, what does he say about black pepper? If it ain't enough for you to see it on the top, it ain't enough black pepper. And he says a biscuit ain't buttered enough unless it talks to you when you pick it up. He's got some pretty good ideas about good food. And I kind of agree with that. Okay, when it simmers just a little bit, I know it's hot enough for the cornstarch to thicken it. Okay, it's boiling. So where did I put my mixture? Make sure it's mixed up. Sometimes you've when you're making this cornstarch slurry, sometimes it settles. So right before you pour it in, be sure you give it a good little stir because you don't want a bunch of old nasty lumps in there. And then we're just going to add it in. And it's already getting thicker. And if I've misjudged, I'm just going to add some more red. I have. It's getting way thick with the potato starch. I think it's going to be too... We'll see. But if I have it too thick, I'll just add some whole milk to thin it down just a little bit. I think I could have got by with two tablespoons of cornstarch, but I don't know. I like the juice thick. That way, if I have some left and I want to turn it into potato soup, it's nice and thick and creamy. This may be just about right. We'll see. I'm just second-guessing myself because y'all are all watching me, and I'm trying to do it right. I want to get a an A+. Plus. My daughter used to say I made a 100 A+. Plus. So that's what I want. I want a 100 A+. Plus. Okay, I'm going to cut my fire down because this is kind of like when you make gravy. It pops when it because it's thick. And when it simmers and makes those little simmer bubbles, it'll pop and it'll burn. So keep your lavender oil handy where you can dab it on there and take the burn away. I've had several of y'all that have commented and told me that you were glad to learn about the lavender oil and it certainly had worked. If those, if I've got some new folks here that hadn't listened to this before, keep you a bottle of lavender oil. If you steam your harm, something pops on it, and bug bites too, it's good for that. Put you some lavender oil on it about every couple of hours or if it starts burning again sooner and you won't even, I've touched the hot oven and it, it doesn't even make a blister. If you'll keep putting the lavender on it, you won't have an issue. Okay, folks, these are about done. I'm going to get me another little spoon and taste of them. Make sure I've got everything right and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get this one uploaded for y'all to watch. Y'all gonna watch this on Saturday, so see, here's something good to go with that ham for Sunday dinner. Okay, y'all, you can see the pieces of potato in among the creamy sauce. There's my mama's stewed potatoes, and they taste just like hers. So I'm gonna fix y'all a recipe card to have at the end, and you can double it or whatever for the size of your family. This would make probably four good servings. Depends on how hungry you are. 
But you could also put this over in a bowl and add you a few bacon bits and a little bit of cheddar cheese and you'd have a delicious potato soup. Just another idea. One dish, make enough for tomorrow and make potato soup out of it tomorrow. Okay, friends, now y'all got one more of my good recipes that we've been eating for 50 years around our house. Write it down, put it in your little book, and you'll have your good extra that, like I said, you can use it for two different dishes. Have your stewed potatoes with your ham or fried chicken, pork chops, chicken tenders, whatever you're having. And then make enough tomorrow, heat it up, be careful that you don't scorch it. And then stir in some uh, cheddar cheese or just sprinkle it on the top with some bacon bits and you've got delicious potato soup. So, you know, you can whiz it up if you want to with your immersion blender and make it smoother, but I like it with pieces of potato in it anyway. And a little cheating thing. If you have a bunch of it, your sauce left and you've dipped your potatoes out, if you happen to have a can of even store-bought little whole potatoes or cubed ones, drain them and rinse them and put them in there and heat them, nobody will ever know the difference. And you've made another complete meal out of one meal. Y'all take care of yourself. We're still in trouble sometimes. Things haven't got any better for as I can see. So I want you to be sure that you're making a little bit of preparations, stocking your pantry a little bit. I'm going to talk to y'all about that in a day or two. You don't stock your pantry with what's on sale. You take inventory of what your family eats, and that's what you stock your pantry with. You don't want the same thing I've got. And I probably don't want the same thing you've got, because we probably don't eat just alike. But you know your family, and you know the ones that you feed. So, you stock your pantry with what your folks eat. So, start watching your sale papers if you have it. And uh, when you go to the store, just buy one extra something. And you know, in a little while, you'll have three or four extra meals in the pantry. I'm not talking about just the chaos that we're in right now. We never know. Some of y'all live in earthquake country. Some of y'all live in tornado country. We live in hurricane country. Um, you have to stay a little bit ahead and prepared. But coronavirus taught us that too, so just make sure you're being wise. Take care, you little old selves, and hurry right back over here in a day or two, and we'll cook something else good. The Lord bless and keep you.